A subscriber drew a portrait of me. The resemblance is uncanny, isn't it? Hi everybody, welcome to Game On. My name is Justin, and today we're going to take a look at the confirmed ships in the Spelljammer 5e promotional material and help give you a leg up by comparing them to their older edition ships to help you do better in space combat. So let's get into it right away. So the first ship we're going to take a look at is the Galleon, which we see in the trailer and as a mini in the promotional material. The Galleon is not a really great spacefaring ship. It was never designed for that. However, humans have stuck a helm onto it, usually a minor helm, though could have a major helm, and is now able to fly through Realm Space, Wild Space, or the Phlogiston. It is adequately armored and armed itself, but it is not a warship. The GIF, however, those hippo men really like it when they put a little bit more ballistae or catapults onto it to make it sort of a warship. It's more of a light warship than anything, it's not really meant for long-term fighting, but it is great for some exploration and treasure hunting. So get that ship if you want to find yourself in a cool planet looking for lost treasures. Now the next ship we're going to take a look at is the Man of War, which we'll see in this drawing, but is also known as the Star Moth according to the promotional minis material. This is an elven warship that sometimes humans will use. The cool thing about this ship is that it's got its armament surrounded around the hull and the decks in different places, so in case one side of the ship gets hit by a really nasty attack, it can still fight as if it's almost at full strength because it's spread out. Now humans are going to use this in their navies as sort of a light cruiser attack ship, whereas elves are going to use this more like a light destroyer, trying to do some long range attacks, as well as long range scouting. The back of the ship is able to be encased in glass, and in that back ship, the elves really like to build a little ecosphere in there with trees, plants for food, and its own water cycle. Meaning that elves love to use this for deep space, deep phlogiston exploration because it has its own water system, its own food, and it's able to keep the elves going for quite some time. And this ship now that we're looking at is called the Squid Ship, which we can see in the promotional material and in the minis. This ship is one of the most common ships known in space, through Wild Space and the Phlogiston. Humans and Elves normally use this, though sometimes an Illithid will use it. Maybe Dwarves or Gnomes as well. It is very common. Where it comes from, not too many people know. Some people think that it comes from an old Illithid slave planet, where the slaves rebelled against the Illithids and escaped using their nautiloid technology as well as kind of a clutched together making of a crazy squid looking ship. And now we think that the humans just saw it and copied it because it was such a good ship because it's agile, it's fast, it's got some good armament, and it makes for a really good ship if you want to just be a mad lad and suicide it because that front between the two tentacles is a very long ram which you can use to just pierce through your enemies and then, of course, grab them with your tentacles and board them. That's why it's great for pirates and that's why it's a great warship. It's not so much the greatest treasure ship, it doesn't have the biggest cargo bay, but you can use it for exploration and some light transport as well as having some good armament and defense. So next is the Niyogi Death Spider that we can see in some of the artwork here. This thing is a terrifying ship. It is flown by Niyogi, which are those like spider centipede alien people, as well as their slaves, which are usually umber hulks and humans. These ships are designed to kind of go out on the prowl and find themselves some more slaves so the Niyogi can dominate them and then use them for their own bargaining chips, either with Illithids or with Drow or whoever they want to trade with. Niyogi Death Spiders are pretty scary. You really don't want to fight them. You're pretty much better off just running away. And what's even scarier is the brood spider setup of the ship. This ship has a great old master, which is an old Niyogi that is swollen with uh, babies in him. And 
eventually he'll burst and the babies will eat him. But what's really disgusting about this ship is its one and only task is to go out, find you. They don't care about what your treasure is. They don't want your treasure. They just want to eat you so that they can reproduce. So if you see a death spider, just run. It's better off not trying to get dominated by them because if you're not dominated by them, they're going to eat you instead. What you see next is the Tyrant Hive Mind ship in this mini form. And Tyrant Hive Mind ships have one and only task, and that is purification. Because beholders think that they are the only true beings created by the gods, and they are gods themselves, and nobody else should exist. So this walnut concave shaped crazy looking ship with eye stalks and sometimes tentacles, all it is is to find, all it's trying to do is find you and kill you. And what it does is it has its uh, brood mother, which is a, uh, a big old beholder female that sits in the middle of this giant half walnut shaped ship. And it links all of the beholders together. And all the beholders link together somewhere between 15 and 20 all linked together and they use their eye stock beams that are so terrifying to fight against them with on land. Well, multiply that by 15 or even 20 fold and that's how they attack you. That's right, screw ballistas and catapults. They just use their death ray on you and there's 20 times the regular death ray. So if you see one of these tyrant ships, they don't want any parlay. They don't want to talk. They don't want to trade. They want to kill you. So run away. Hey, if you like what you see so far, can you leave us a like just so that we know so we can make more material for you guys that you want to see? And if you want to see more stuff like tabletop gaming, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Up next in the promotional material, we see the mini for the turtle ship. The turtle ship is a lizard folk ship, though the humans are known for using them too as their bulwark frigates in their navies the turtle ship is able to take quite a beating as well as dish a beating. Now, the lizard folk like to use it for exploration as well as maybe keeping their eggs as well as maybe keeping pets and just general flying around, piracy, exploration, treasure hunting. And humans really like to just bolster it down with even more armor, put it on the flanks of its navies, and then when it when its fleet is attacked, they take all of the brunt of the attacks while the cruisers and the destroyers that are hidden in this formation back behind the turtles are launching and attacking anything that is trying to get through this bulwark of turtle ships. Don't try to attack a turtle ship one-on-one. -on -one. If you're going to, try to kite it to death because it's going to tank everything and then it's going to run over you. Up next in the minis, we have what is known as the Scorpion. This is used by goblins, orcs, and the Scrow, which are a very rare, very highly intelligent, almost sort of orc-like creature, which you don't want to come across because they are very scary. The Scorpion is a medium warship that is designed to really do up close and personal combat. It does have some long-range ballista and catapults. However, what it does really well is with its claws come up to you, grab hold of you, and board. So you might have a lot of military marine warships trying to attack you that way, or you might have pirates that are gonna latch onto your treasure galleon and then be boarded. So Watch out, try to take out those claws first so they can't grab onto you because once you're held, you can't really escape. What we see next in the minis is what is known as the Bombard, which is a tiny galleon sized ship with a big gun on it that basically goes the whole length of the keel. And it is, you point the ship where you want and then you ignite the cannon that takes about four fifths of the deck up and kapoof, it blows. Uh, a giant explosive Greek fire sort of cannon at your enemies. Now, <laughs> you don't want to use this in the Phlogiston, though there are some crazies out there who will use it in the Phlogiston as a last ditch effort in case they're going to be dominated or turned into slaves. 
and they can just light off that explosive cannon, which will, in fact, blow up everything around them in the phlogiston, including the liquid soup itself. So it's kind of like a last-ditch suicide, I refuse to be taken by you, a lithids kind of weapon, or it can be used as a one-time, really long-range weapon that will blow your ship backwards as you shoot it. It's kind of funny, it's so big that your, your ship kind of flies backwards after the repulse from it. Next up we have the Shrike, which is used by halflings, elves, and humans. It's a very small ship that's usually used for planetary defense and system patrol. It also is used by both the halflings, the elves, and the humans as a messenger ship in its navies because it is very, very quick. You don't want to use it as a main combat ship though. It's usually there to kite a big ship until its allies arrive with something more powerful because you're going to get blown out of the sky with anything slightly bigger than it. Up next in this mini form we have the Damselfly which is a very small scout sort of fighter ship that is able to hold a couple of crew but it's really tiny and it's really agile. Usually used by humans and elves, though lizard folk do use the wasp version of it, which allows for uh, more murky and water to be put into the ship and is better enclosed for their environment. Alithids will sometimes use the damselfly. It's mostly used as system defense or as a screen fighter in large fleet formations. But wizards also like to use it because it has a great amount of speed, armament, and some protection itself. So it can be used in the Phlogiston as a sort of wizard tower for wizards to provide a safe place to experiment as well as defend themselves if they need to. So here you see some flying fish. There's also a flying fish mini. That can be just about anything. There are a lot of fish kind of based spell jamming ships. Here is the Marlin. It's kind of a light warship though it can be upgraded to be a light medium warship. I would suggest using it more like a destroyer or a cruiser trying to do some long range uh, reach out and touching. You don't really want to go toe to toe with a heavier warship with this, especially the Marlin. It's not designed to take that. It's usually used by humans, though lizard folk and elves will use it as well. Now the Nautiloid is one of the iconic spell jammers out there. You can see it in the promotional material and as a midi. This makes up the brunt of an illithid fleet, and it can be used as a frigate, a destroyer, a cruiser, a battleship, even a light carrier, and even an assault carrier if the illithids want to invade and enslave a planet. This is not a ship you want to go up one-to-one to one with. It's usually not a ship that you will even want to take your fleet to attack, especially if there's a lot, a lot of the Nautiluses with them. Fleets that try to attack a fleet of Nautiluses tend to lose because Nautiluses are basically just have everything well-rounded about them. So if one ship gets destroyed, the ships in the middle of the fleet can tend to kind of come in and take over whatever role that ship was taking, whether they were a frigate or a destroyer or a cruiser, they can kind of switch roles quickly to help fill in the gaps that the humans and elves leave in that fleet when they destroy the nautiloids. Usually it takes a lot of combined firepower to take one down. Now imagine 10 or 20 of them trying to invade your planet. Quite scary. The next ship that you're going to see in this mini might be one of the few ships that you would take on a head-to-head -head with the Nautilus, and that is the Hammerhead. This is a human ship that is their heavy-duty, like, attack battleship. It has a lot of heavy weapons, it could be decked out with even more heavy weapons. Its armor is pretty decent, but it's really more designed to attack than it is to be hit. You can, with that hammerhead, use that giant hammerhead and smash right into your enemies, cleaving them in twain and making the hammerhead one of the best heavy warship battleships in not only the navy and elven fleet, but in all of Wild Space and the Phlogiston. The next ship that we're going to look at is called the Aesthetic. It's also called the Rhaegar Aesthetic. Now the Rhaegar are a elusive race that 
many people think the elves came from. They're elvish in, they're like space elves. Uh, and they're and and they're really hard to find. Most people think that they are all dead, though there are some aesthetics that are still flying in the phlogiston, so maybe they're not all dead. Now, what is the aesthetic? The Rhaegar live by one code, and that is, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it in style. So the Rhaegar aesthetic ships are usually designed to look like flying artwork pieces. That's why they're called aesthetics though it's not spelled the same as you might say aesthetic. It's kind of weird. But they are beautiful ships. Why are they so beautiful? Because the Rhaegar want you to see something very truly beautiful before they blow you out of the sky. The last thing we're going to look at is this whale in space, because you might be wondering why the heck there's a whale in space. I can't confirm that this whale is what this is, but there is something in Spelljammer called the Battle Dolphin, which is basically a cargo-carrying, agile, quick, and graceful ship that the humans and the elves use, usually as a supply ship in their navies. What ship are you most excited to pilot in 5th edition Spelljammer? Make sure to leave a comment below so that we can have a nice discussion about what ships we all want to fly. Do you have any exciting ships from the older edition Spelljammers that we haven't seen yet? Are you excited about the lore? What else do you want to learn about Spelljammer? Please let us know in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching Game On. Again, my name is Justin, and I like to say to all of you, Game On.